issue come up over and over again. Unfortunately, it's always brought up in the context of partisan efforts to make someone look bad. Um, and the unfortunate part of that is, is that it, it creates a lot of distrust among the public for, for the efforts of their elected officials. And the fact of the matter is, I can tell you from my experience um, in my time in the legislature and in my time as a, as a citizen dealing with both Republican and Democrat elected officials, it's been my personal experience that most of the people you deal with are very honest and work very hard to follow the rules. And, and they are ethical people. But there, there is that few, there is a few that will at times bend the rules, or there might be conduct that looks like, that, that looks bad, even though it doesn't necessarily violate the rules. The proposals put forth by Representative Fluke and myself today are among many needed changes, and I'm thankful that several of our colleagues have, both this year and in the past, suggested other ways to stay one step ahead, one step ahead of the small bipartisan minority of individuals who may seek to violate the public trust. What we don't do is stand here today and tell you that these changes are going to fix the problem permanently. Over time, power and influence always finds a way to circumvent the law. So it's our hope, we've discussed this, that several years from now, two more legislators will reach across the aisle and seek to close any loopholes that may have developed in the legislation passed in 2010, because this is an ever-evolving process. Finally, the reason for that is because fighting public corruption is like fighting the flu. We come up with a vaccine, and the flu comes back the next year with a new strain. So as the flu adapts, the, vac adapts, the vaccine must evolve with it. Honest governments, like healthy societies, are the result of eternal vigilance. And so that's what we're working here to do. That's why we're trying to do it in a bipartisan.